Whither is God? he cried. I shall tell you. We have killed him. You and I. All of us are his murderers. But how have we done this? How were we able to drink up the sea? Who gave us the sponge to wipe away the entire horizon? Are we not staying as though an infinite nothing? Do we not feel the breath of empty space? Do we not smell anything yet of God's decomposition? God too decompose. God is dead. God remains dead, and we have killed him. How shall we, the murderers, of all murderers, comfort ourselves? I come too early, he said then. My time has not yet come. This tremendous event is still on its way, still wandering. It has not yet reached the ears of man. So who said that? I have no idea, but it was very odd. It was Nietzsche. Uh. <laughs> it's an excerpt from his book, The Madman. Anyway, uh. I think I clicked the wrong option by mistake in the last one, so I think you might have agreed to leave. Anyway, there's no way to tell until we watch the replay. <laughs> anyway, but <clears throat> here we go. When you return to your room, you find that things have gotten a little wild. When you finally locate and reassemble your bed, you notice thick globs of dried macaroni and cheese stuck to it, stuck to the mattress. When you ask, yeah. when you ask Bonnie what it is, she says dinner. All right, that's it. Gross. <laughs> All right. I'm hoping we're almost done with adulthood, since Phoenix needs to go pretty soon, and I'm my cough is getting really bad, as you can probably tell. Or young adulthood, at least. And you're kind of running out of money. You won't have much after the debt. <coughs> to pay the debt, you owe. Anyway, more <coughs> college. You have just realized that you will never have the time to do a political science term paper that is due in three days. You are approached by someone with a pencil-thin mustache who will gladly <coughs> sell you a term paper. What? And guarantee at least a B. Really? What? <coughs> what do you want to do? <coughs> Buy the paper, ask the professor for an extension, try and do it anyway. Try and do it anyway. You have the intellectual skills necessary to do a good paper, even in the limited amount of time uh, you have to do the work. You get a B+. <coughs> Freaking weirdo, dude. Cause <laughs> I have term papers for you. Okay. <laughs> the first one's free. Oh, um. Your philosophy professor is delivering a lecture on the image of today's woman. Yep. He describes the present generation of young women as morally weak and unable to take a stand. Hmm. He criticizes them by saying they are apathetic, naive, even misanthropic, uh, concerned with gathering resources and acquiring worldly goods, and unconcerned with the larger issues of truth, existence, and real love. How will you react to such a lecture? Sit quietly and take notes. <laughs> take notes, I like that. Disagree with him or write him off as being pompous and bombastic. Write him off as being pompous. You're not going to disagree with him? No, he's just a pompous ass. But it's a philosophy course. You're supposed to disagree with people. Fine, I'll disagree. You match wits with your professor. See, this is what you're supposed to be doing in philosophy courses. But he outmaneuvers you with logic. Really? I like that. You can't even defend that women aren't all losers. <laughs> awesome. He beats you. <laughs> The fact uh, is that the new this game seriously. The fact is that the new generation of young women is going after material possessions more than any other before it. Um, okay. Obviously this was sent in the 80s. Uh, he points to the popularity of classified personal advertisements which support the current notion that even true love and good relationships can be acquired like used cars. How is that a legitimate argument? Even though you lose on some minor points, you gain respect from the professor who gives you an A for the course. Told ya. He's still a pompous idiot. Alright. 
How much, aren't you almost done with college? Holy cow, you've been in college for like seven years. <coughs> Get a degree! During a college vacation break, you bump into a person who used to be a good friend in high school. She chose to skip college and find a job. Now she's married for the second time. Holy cow, already? And has two children. She works part-time in a clothing factory. When you try to converse with her, she seems distant and aloof, almost resentful. Ask her what is on her mind. Make small talk for a few minutes, then walk away. Ask what's on her mind. It's a glutton for punishment. She says, <laughs> what would you care? You and your stupid education. Oh, sorry. Besides, you have the easy life in college now. What? Well, then why didn't she freaking go to college? Because she's dumb. This is why we're not friends anymore. She basically did just say, you and your stupid education. All right. You would never understand my worries. Get angry and walk away. Ask her if she wants to talk about it anyway. <coughs> I like Ask that. her if she wants to talk about it. You sin your sincerity causes her to see that she has treated you in a rude fashion. Yeah! Wow. Good job. She admits that her life is a very difficult now. She has bills to pay and other responsibilities and wasn't read she wasn't really ready for. Maybe she should have, you know, gone to freaking college, you nitwit! <laughs> Fracking moron. God, this girl pisses me off. All right. Her life is routine, and she gets a uh, little enjoyment out of her work. Yeah, well, maybe you'd get a good job if you went to fracking college. You... Ah! Seeing you sparked some envy in her, but... Seeing you sparked some envy in her. <laughs> you didn't completely ruin your life. It sparked some envy in her. <laughs> it was totally my fault that you decided not to go to college. But soon yeah. your friendship is renewed. She only criticized you. Why? She only criticized you because she felt you might be looking down on her because she didn't go to college. No, I'm looking down on her. You're fine. Uh, a move she regrets now. Yeah. Well, you know what you can do? Enroll! Freaking... Your patience brings down her defenses and motivates her to take a closer look at her life. Fantastic. <laughs> Graduate. Shocking. What's taking you so long? Congratulations, you have graduated from college! <laughs> what was that? You're breaking up a little bit. Okay. According to the thing, there's an internet problem. Holy cow. What is going on? <laughs> yeah, I know you did. The call quality information... What? Why is the call quality so sucky? Holy cow, I just realized... This is on the screen. Sorry about this, folks. I'm taking a look at my Skype thing. As you can see, the... Okay. Sorry about the folks. You gotta look at me calling Phoenix on Skype. She should be back now. <laughs> yes. Okay, you're back now. I it was telling me hey. that there was call quality problems. I don't know if the folks got to see that part of it, but anyway. Congratulations, you have graduated from college. <laughs> Yay! Okay. Hi. So, now that you've graduated from college, you can... Do you want to get married? To Rick? Yes. <laughs> and you'll probably sign up for it. He's, he's fine with it, yeah. He's like, yeah, sure. Welcome to the marriage icon. While you're in this icon, you can make arrangements and plan an errand of marriage. Um, leave a marriage. What do you like to do? Uh, we're going to become engaged. Yay. <laughs> One thing that may cross your mind is accepting a ring. What kind of ring would you be satisfied with? $100 ring? $500 ring? $1,000 ring? <laughs> $5,000 ring, $10,000 ring, or a family heirloom? What in the hell? I don't know. Why isn't there an anything would be fine option? I, I guess that would be the $100 ring. You're getting a pretty chintzy ring for $100. I guess one. Oh, come uh, on. Now you have standards. Back go 500. 
back when that guy was, you know, propositioning you to finish what Barb started, then you had standards. But now, nah, you know, just anyone will do. You're only getting married. That sounds reasonable. Well, I highlight that right out of college. He has, you know... Holy cow, Skype is really breaking up. That much money. All right. You can always upgrade later. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. No problem. Surely you must have given some thoughts to how Rick's family would feel about coming into the family. Would you discuss it with them? No. Yes or no? Yes, okay. How considerate. This is a, how your future in-laws would probably react. His mother would sense your trustworthy <coughs> character, character and approve of this aspect of your personality. His mother would sense your gentleness and would like this about you. His dad would see that you are responsible and would make a good mother for your children. All right. If you decide to have any, overall, Rick's parents would think that you are a nice young lady. They would like you, and you would have their blessing. Woot. <laughs> now that you have given your engagement a good deal of thought, it wouldn't hurt to drop a few hints to Rick about this big event. Hmm. <laughs> you can drop some hints or wait for him to initiate a discussion about it. Drop some hints, because apparently he's too dumb. Yeah, he's not going to do it on his own. Nick, Rick begins to get... Yeah, Nick. Okay. Rick <laughs> begins to get very nervous when he discovers that you are hinting at. He doesn't want to talk about it right now. Okay, you're not getting engaged. What a douche. Oh, wait, we already finished college. Alright. So I need to find some more stuff for us to do in the meantime. While we wait for you to get older. A wild driver cuts you off on the highway. You can be furious, angry, or calm. Calm. Oh, this is good. You can let him go, or you can go after him for revenge. Uh, let him go? You're not gonna revenge? No. <laughs> this person is a crazy man. He had a gun and would have tried to kill you if you had messed with him. You were <laughs> smart to hold your temper, even though you would have liked to run him off the road. He had a gun. Okay. Yay. I'm smart. You were in a large department store shopping. When you left the house this morning, you didn't put on that much makeup. Okay? Because you're shopping. Okay. And you are in comfortable, casual clothes. You have a question for the salesperson, but you can't seem to attract his attention. Oh, I forgot. You need to get a full-time job now. Sorry, that was just an aside. Um, every <laughs> time... You say, excuse me, he says, just a minute, miss, and chats with another salesperson about what seems like, what seems to be a social matter rather than a business one. You can be angry, assertive, or calm. Assertive. Calm apparently didn't work. Uh, you can interrupt the conversation, get the store manager, or leave the store. Leave the store. Just straight up leave. You've made an inappropriate response. What the fuck? Fine, be calm. And leave the store? Yes. This doesn't bother the salesperson one bit. He just goes right on talking and watches you walk out the door. Mm -hmm. Alright, first things first. I'll just go to a different store. Probably cheaper. Find 10 clothes. Yeah, that's fantastic. You need to get a job now. <laughs> so we're going to apply for a full-time job. Uh, oh, you already have a job. Okay, we're gonna get rid of your first job and get a real job. <laughs> uh, is it because you're dissatisfied with the job, you want to retire, or because you want a different career? Different career. Obviously. <laughs> Alright, full-time job. What employment area are you interested in? Business, Sales, Creative, Health Service 1, Health Service 2, Entrepreneur, Teacher, Researcher, Lawyer, Technical, Labor, Labor 1, which is Factory Worker, uh, Assembler, etc. Labor 2, Supervisor of Labor 1 Positions. And that's it. Uh... <laughs> Tell me what kind of job you want, and then I'll try and find something that matches it. Let's go with the creative one. Okay. Congratulations, you start work immediately. 
What did I do? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> okay. Got a full-time job now, though. Uh, yeah. you're almost 30, so I think you're about to leave young adulthood. Finally. <laughs> You've been thinking about the kind of impression you make on people. Are you satisfied or not satisfied? <coughs> satisfied? Pat yourself on the back or try to change something about yourself. Pat myself on the back. Well, a little bit of self-praise never hurt anyone. Let's just try to keep it in perspective. <laughs> a friend of a friend from Hollywood calls and asks if you would like to be on a new game show called Date of a Lifetime. Oh! It's a television dating show where you can win cash valuable prizes and a night of romance with the and an adventure and a night of romance and adventure with one of the most beautiful world's most beautiful men. So you can be excited, share, shy, or you can be share, or you can be shy <laughs> or turned off. Turned off. I'll let you do this since this is stupid. Agree it really is. Agree to be on the show or not? No. How could you pass up pass up the date of a lifetime? Well, like how I'm young trying to get engaged. <laughs> Young adulthood needs to end because I can't talk anymore. Easily, evidently. So you won't win a date with a big star, a thousand dollars, or a trip to Bermuda, or a gift certificate from the bagel catalog. At least you still have your dignity. Yes, you Thank do. Thank you. <laughs> Let's try and get engaged again. I'll make the same choices with you as before. He has been thinking about it, too. The two of you discussed the possibilities, and it seems like the two of you may have a future together. As a matter of fact, not long after the two of you begin talking about it, the following happens. While reading the morning paper, you notice that Rick has taken out a full page ad asking for your hand. That's really stupid. <laughs> I mean, really stupid. Maybe if he'd take some of that money and bought a ring with it, <laughs> you wouldn't have such a crappy one. Anyway, definitely an 80s approach to getting engaged, but effective. You must be flattered. Mm -hmm. Or stupid. That's the other possibility. Anyway, now for the big moment. Your desire to have Rick ask for your hand has come true. Will you accept? Yes or no? Yes. No, I'm just going to turn him down at this point. You're on your way to your wedding day. Congratulations. Yay. Yay. Getting married to Rick. You're almost 30. <laughs> Only now getting married. All right. Well, that is... Well, I think that's actually starting to be the average age now. Anyway, you have been invited to a party at the home of an acquaintance. When you arrive at the party, you notice that you and your companion have virtually nothing in common. You are just got engaged and now you're upset that you have nothing in common. What in the hell oh, is oh, wrong with this game? Oh, nothing in common with the other people there. Sorry. They dress differently, speak differently, and listen to different kind of music. They're beatniks. Although you are in the same room as everyone else, you seem separate from them. You have been there almost an hour and still haven't talked, spoken to a single person. Wow, it's kind of lame. <laughs> That's how I act at parties. You're just pretty sad. You can be uncomfortable or at ease. Uncomfortable? You can leave the party early or mingle with the guests. Mingle with the guests? Your discomfort is a natural reaction to people who are different from you in man appearance and mannerisms. You have developed excellent social skills. As a result, you have no trouble mingling with the crowd. Many of the people in the room are from foreign countries. The information you gather about them is fascinating and rewarding. Hmm. Wow. <laughs> you are in a restaurant with three of your friends, and it is time to pay the check. The bill is $25, allowing another five for a tip. You can be generous, you can be cautious, or opportunistic. What? Generous, cautious, or opportunistic. Pick one. Generous. Offer to pick up the tab, suggest separate checks, wait for someone else to pick up the tab. Offer to pay the check. Your social status takes a rise. Resources decline. <laughs> Alright. 
is a local blood drive. A volunteer asks if you would like to donate some blood. Squeamish or generous? Generous. <laughs> Give blood, pa pass up the opportunity. Give blood. That sounded weird, though. <laughs> Generously giving up blood. Yep. <sighs> you are a brave soul. See, what you do is you just give all the blood you can without dying, then you run up and have Lord British heal you, which he does for free, and then you run down and give more blood. Uh. Or maybe that's the trick to getting sacrifice in Ultima 4. Huh. Possibly. <laughs> okay. Anyway. The intern is tall and dark with a sexy, deep voice. Of course. Your heart is beating faster already. You will only feel a little pinprick, he says. Oh, he's only got a little prick, I see. It's disappointing. <laughs> <laughs> he leans over you and tightens the tourniquet, resting his strong, bare arm next to you. Yes, women are notoriously aroused by bare arms. After 15 minutes, he offers you a snack to get you back on your feet. At this point, I'm sure you wouldn't mind donating another 40 pints or so, but you will need to keep some for yourself. Really? Think about something else. Seriously, who made this game? A psychologist, actually, I think. Well, he's not a very good one. <laughs> he re he's really not. This is really bad. While socializing at a friend's party, you run into someone you had a terrible crush on in the fifth grade. <laughs> <laughs> it never ends! He looks even better now than he did back then. Yeah, well, it should be. It's freaking ten back then, you pervert. Alright. He is with someone who looks bored. She is just standing there, picking her teeth with one of those fancy toothpicks. You can be sociable, slash flirtatious, or unsociable, slash self-conscious. How? The first one. Walk over and say hello, or just ignore him. Say hello. Uh, you are introduced to Debbie, his date, who excuses herself to look for something to eat. You can make small <laughs> talk, then excuse yourself, or bring up the fact that you had a terrible crush on him in the old days. Small talk and leave. <laughs> you talk about how things have changed and how everyone has grown up since grade school. Neither of you has kept up with anyone. Really, you didn't keep up with anyone from grade school. <laughs> the conversation soon runs- I don't know any of the people I was friends with in grade school. The conversation soon runs out of steam, and you excuse yourself. Besides, Debbie has returned and is whining about wanting to go home or go to a real party. <laughs> Alright. You are about to spend the afternoon catching up on some work with when your steady partner reminds you of a promise you made to fix the hem on his pants. You did promise, but right now, catching up on your work seems to be a higher priority. After all, you are creative. Your partner doesn't seem to understand this. He keeps saying you promised. Apparently, he's five years old. You can be angry- <laughs> you promised! You can Sounds be, like a husband. You can be angry- Not yet. You're not married yet. Alright. You can be angry, guilty, he's or- good, He's doing a good job of it, though. Angry, guilty, <laughs> or ambivalent. It's slash so confused. So, so I'm confused? Where am I? <laughs> Who are you? <laughs> Go with confused. You can hem the pants or do your work. Hem the pants? Oh, shut the fuck up. You would really like to get your work done, but you don't want to make your partner upset by going back on your word. After you hem the pants, you can talk to him about your feelings or just let things pass. Talk to him about my feelings. I'm you are a woman, you. after Revenge. all. <laughs> you do Revenge. need to. That's what you get for being annoying. We're going to talk about our feelings. <laughs> We're going to talk about our feelings now. Okay. You tell him that you it to was. Talk about your damn pants. You tell him that it was very difficult for you to hem his pants this afternoon because you resented having to do it. Now you feel a bit angry because you feel you could have spent m the time more usefully. Your partner admits that he knows it was difficult. <laughs> he also admits that the real issue wasn't the pants at all. What? Oh no, there's some sort of emotional back... I wanted your attention! Ugh. He has emotional problems backing up the pants issue. Why can it never just end at pants? 
He has Dos been. Pantalones es rojo. He has been <laughs> feeling neglected lately, and his insecurity uh-huh. was showing through. Yeah, and neglected. You just you basically forced him to get engaged to you. How much attention does he need? <laughs> the two of you realize that it is probably better to discuss the feelings and issues behind things that make you upset. Yay. Yay. <coughs> get older already. <laughs> How about my husband get older? You know, he's kind of stupid. You got a lot of hey, money. Lucas, you promised. I feel neglected. You got a lot of money. I mean, your new job is nice. All right. Yay. You'll be able to pay off your student loans. Because I neglect my boyfriend. <laughs> <coughs> You'll be able to pay out, able to pay off your student loans with it. All right. The thought occurs to you that it might be interesting to travel to a faraway place for a little while and experience new things. Someone suggests joining the Peace Corps. What? You can be stimulated by the notion or turned off by the notion. Turned off. That makes no sense. You know what? I do like the Peace Corps. It was founded by my favorite president, John Kennedy. Uh, but I don't think I'd ever join it. <laughs> That's not... I want to experience new countries. Let me join the Peace Corps instead of, you know, just going to a new country. You're not going to go on vacation. That's stupid, Phoenix. You're going to join the <laughs> yeah, Peace Corps. That's, that's, that's just... No. That's... You can contact the Peace Corps Peace for Corps. more... You can contact the Peace Corps for more information or dismiss the idea. Dismiss the idea. <laughs> might have seemed like an interesting thought, but it's not anything you would actually do. No. A close friend calls you up in a very serious tone of voice. She says you need, she needs to speak with you about something right away. Her life is falling apart, and you are the only one who can help her. You can be sympathetic or anxious. Sympathetic. You can talk to her or tell her it sounds too serious. You don't want that kind of responsibility. Talk to her. <laughs> That's a horrible friend. I don't feel like having the responsibility of being your friend, so don't call me ever again. With you and your problems. You agree to meet. Her problem is that she has just found out that she is pregnant and unmarried, which is conf- and is confused about what she should do. Uh, she can't speak with her family, and her boyfriend has abandoned her. What would you suggest to her? Have an abortion, have the baby and keep it, have the baby and give it up for adoption, Try to help her come up with a decision on her own, or tell her to get help from someone else. Help her come up with a decision on her own. Not gonna perform a coat hanger abortion on her? No. <laughs> that would be an interesting mini game for this. <laughs> um, actually, that joke was probably in really bad humor, but you know what? So what? <laughs> Tough it out, guys. I'm gonna have people commenting and being offended. It just reminds me of the sales part movie. Mm. What was that line in the mall? My mother stabbed me in the heart with a coating when I was still in the womb. <laughs> what? A sensitive choice. You must have realized that giving anyone a direct piece of advice on a matter as serious as this would surely be a mistake. If things Duh. didn't turn out well, she might have hold you responsible. Unfortunately, it Duh. is often very difficult to help someone in trouble sort their his or her f- true feelings. Uh, the person comes to rely on your direction, she leans on you so that you begin to feel responsible for her even though you do not actively try to give her advice. <laughs> While I don't want to say that a person can resolve crisis only by seeking outside help, it is often the best way. Seriously, this psychologist is a really bad psychologist. Yeah, well, he acts like this is the way it always works. He I, wants more money. He's basically saying, you should always go see a psychiatrist and pay us. I've, I've seen worse psychologists. <laughs> For instance, have you ever heard of Phoenix about how sex is death? <laughs> I have indeed. And speaking of which, this episode contains subject matter of a death nature. I was gonna say. I was gonna be like, God, again. A couple uh, of your girlfriends are going to a bumps and grinds. Holy cow. That's quite a club. A new club yeah. which features male strippers. That's in capitals, like it's some unheard of thing. No, there are no male strippers. It's not <laughs> like it's the freaking 21st century. Anyway, tonight is ladies' night at the club. As opposed to the men's night at the male <laughs> stripper club. Hey, don't ca- discount that. Just anyway, think about that. <laughs> anyway, the stripper will be the ape man. 
That sounds very unattractive. <laughs> a guy who comes out in a gorilla suit and leaves in his birthday suit. That hey, sounds you, st incredibly stupid. Hey, if you two want to play Tilly Winks in your birthday suit, that's your business, but I don't go that way. <laughs> you can be interested or not interested. I'm not interested. And neither am I, actually. You can go to the club or stay home. Stay home. A wise choice. I guess you are not really interested in this form of entertainment, party pooper. Or, you know, not pervert. One or the other. At least not the ape man. <laughs> Would have been interesting if it was something else, but that's <coughs> just a little creepy. A friend of yours since grammar school has gotten mixed up in a series of bad deals. Poor judgment and impulse and impulsive harebrained schemes. He calls you up on the phone, sounding very desperate, and asks for a five hundred dollar loan. He can be pity or angry. Why he would be angry, I don't know. Pity. Give him a loan, ask what he wants the loan for, or refuse to give him the money. Ask him what he wants it for. He tells you that he knows a surefire way to make a lot of money. His plan is to raise chinchalas in his basement at home for fun and profit. He has a book on it. Will you lend him the money? No. Aw, oh, come on. He's going to kill the chinchillas. Uh... I've played this game before, and maybe you should give him the money. Fine. I don't know. I'm not sure if it changes each time, but when I did it, it worked out. It sounds like another harebrained scheme, but for some reason, it sounds like it might work. That is, it must sound like that to you. The outcome is that, miraculously, he does make money on it, and gives <laughs> you back your $500 plus an extra 250 for helping him out when he was in need. There. I got you that is very unrealistic. <laughs> I got you $250. And you say I never do anything for you. <laughs> At a party, you meet a group of people who are into the artsy side of life, unlike you, whose job is being creative. They are extremely analytical people, as all artists are, who express themselves creatively. Some are artists, others dancers, and some... <coughs> cough. <laughs> Self-styled renaissance people. They are apolitical and non-materialistic and consider the best decisions one made on the spur of the moment. They are certainly different. You can be impressed, bored, or neutral slash open. Open. You can try to become more like them, criticize them, or do nothing. Do nothing. <laughs> you seem neither threatened n by nor critical of people like this. You seem to be the type of person who is tolerant of many different kinds of people, intellectual, social, and emotional characteristics rise. Yay. In, a very in a very subtle way, Rick's family is trying to influence a decision that the two of you are trying to make. On the other hand, you can appreciate their input. On one hand, you can appreciate their input, but on the other, you are not sure that you should start allowing them this kind of influence over your lives. After all... The two of you are adults, you're like 30, and should be capable of making your own decisions. You can be angry, compliant, or confused. Confused. <laughs> you're always confused. Tell them you would like to work it out on your own, or go along with their advice. Tell them we'd like to work it out ourselves. Who do you think should tell them that you would like to make to keep out of the decision-making process when it involves the lives of you and Rick? The two of you, just Rick, just you. Both of us. A good choice. This way it doesn't seem like you are pushing him to do something against his parents, or that you are doing all the talking and Rick must passively accept whatever you say. There is no guarantee that Rick's parents will agree with the two of you, but they should respect your decision. Fantastic. <laughs> and this is the last main mission we have, so hopefully you'll grow up after this. On a recent walk through town, you notice a woman shivering in an alley between two buildings. Because you're, once again, going through an alley. She looks as if she lives, uh, in the street. As you walk by, she crouches close to the building and eyes you suspiciously. They put filberts in the pecan pie. I can just taste them. Alright. She says, crackling in a high voice and hiding her head under her arm and squinting out at you. I hate filberts. <laughs> Fantastic. You notice that her body is shaking wildly and her skin seems very blue. You are wondering if she might be very ill. You mean concerned or unconcerned? Concerned. Offer her some help or ignore her? Offer her help. 
She walks up to you and touches your hair, no fleas in clean hair, no bats in your underwear. Walk away or stay? Walk away? Uh, she checked my underwear. You should stay. Okay. Her hands are shaking badly. You ask her if you can help, and she says doctors are the messengers of Satan. Hmm. Alright. Walk away or stay? Stay. You point out that she is shaking, and she looks uh, at her hand. She leans on your shoulder and says in a low groan, Help me, child. You can call the police or bring her to a hospital. Bring her to a hospital. They know her at the hospital. She has been there many times before. The doctors say she is suffering from exposure. She will only stay there until the symptoms pass. Then she returns to the street. You can offer to help her find a place to live or leave the hospital. Uh, offer to help her find a place to live? Your offer is greatly appreciated, but she declines, saying she prefers the roof of the great outdoors. Exactly one week after you first see her, she approaches you in town, much more coherent, and hands you a large, thick envelope, which feels like it is full of old rags. Open it when you get home, she says, walking off in short, slow steps. When you get home, what will you do? Open the envelope or throw it out? Open the envelope. The envelope contains almost $50,000 in large bills. There is a note that says, don't try to give it back. It's clean money, it's mine, and it's only a small fraction of what I have. God bless you. You have just passed through young adulthood and got $50,000. That should pay off your student loans. Yay! This may have been a time in your life when family activities took a back seat to establishing some independence. In general, your family relationships are good. Physically, you have not been very healthy. You have wisely... Again? You have wisely chosen to stay away from drinking and drugs to a large extent. In this, Am I not healthy again? I don't know. In this phase of life, you have faced several sensitive issues. These include what crowd of people you associate with and what material items being... Um... Uh, bring recognition from this crowd. Sometimes along the line, you may have devoted a portion of your life to a worthy social cause like a charity event or the Peace Corps. Congratulations on your engagement on Turek. Now, regarding your emotional and personality development, very trustworthy. Um, keep your wilder side under control. You're not depressed or traumatized. You're sensible and understanding. You're calm. And you're doing well in your job. Whee! Really smart. Yay! Um, <laughs> by this time, you may have been feeling a bit of pressure to achieve to get ahead, buy a house, or possibly even gasp, settle down. You have gone through quite a range of experiences already, but there's a great deal more to come. Welcome to adulthood. There is only one happiness in life, to love and be loved. Alright. Did it. So, that's gonna be it for this part, or this recording set, rather, of Alter Ego Female Edition. Right. So, I've been Zach, Silly Goose is Inc, and with me I've had... Phoenix Tsukino! The Nature Boy, Phoenix Tsukino. And <laughs> Wait, the Nature Boy? The Nature Boy. Who's... Well, okay, the Nature Girl, who's marrying yeah. the Nature Boy. Alright. Okay, better. <laughs> I forgot that Ric Flair is actually involved in this, so I can't say that. Alright, um... <laughs> So yeah, this has been it for this part of Alter Ego Female Edition, and we'll see you later. Kiss kiss. Bye bye.